to an elementary school. If you want to go into an elementary school classroom, please put ES. Uh, middle school, please put MS before your name. In high school, please put HS. If you could do this right now, that would be helpful so we could set up the breakout rooms as we are um, presenting here. Um, as we are going through tonight, before we hit the breakout rooms, I would like you, as you're hearing our presenters, our panelists, uh, to start thinking about a lesson or a project that connects the SDGs um, that you can share during the breakout room. It's okay if it's something that's in its, its myths. Um, sorry, here, let me go. Um, so it's okay if um, it's something that you're, you know, still in rough draft or in, in, in modification mode, but just start having something in your mind along those lines. So with that said, um, I'll, I'll start first introduce myself. Uh, my name's Tom Young. I'm a first and second grade teacher at Waitsfield Elementary School. I'm a two 2013 alum. Um, our group went to Brazil. And um, I'm happy to be here tonight doing this. Uh, I'll now pass it on to Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Robinson. I teach high school English, um, ESOL, journalism, and gifted classes in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a member of the 2018 fellowship to South Africa. And Sonia. Hi, y'all. Sonia Galavis. I teach fifth grade and then the STEM coordinator in Boise, Idaho. And I'm lucky to join a few of my fellow South Africa 2018 crew. Glad to be here. And John. Yeah, my name is John Tierney. I'm a middle school teacher in uh, Elko, Nevada, I live in Spring Creek. And I was the uh, 2017 China global fellow. And Noah. Hi everyone, I'm Noah Zeichner. I teach high school social studies and Spanish in Seattle Public Schools. And I was also part of the South Africa 2018 um, Global Learning Fellowship cohort. Excited to be here tonight to uh, share some ideas about the SDGs and to learn from other folks here as well. All right, I'll jump in there, Tommy. Is it my turn? Yes, it is, Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone, to this webinar. And thanks to our panelists and to the NEAF um, alumni who have done such a great job of continuing to support um, connection and education around global competence and building global competence in our students. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the NEA Foundation, as you have probably uh, surmised, we do operate a year-long um, professional development and um, opportunity through our Global Learning Fellowship Program, which is a mix of in-person and online uh, learning about global competence that culminates in a field study. And we um, really appreciate it. You can, you can see the diversity of, um, of countries that we visited as a part of those field studies. Um, and we are, we, we are seeking to ensure that that's a enriching, an enriching experience, not just during the year-long fellowship, but beyond. So um, please feel free to check out our website to learn more about the GLF um, Fellows Program to apply, and we encourage you to share that information with other colleagues who might be interested. I'll also just put in a quick plug that we do offer grants to individual educators for a range of projects. Uh, we have three grant, comp three grant programs available to individual educators that you can find on our website. Our next deadline is June 1st and with notifications happening August 1st. And if you apply August 2nd, you'll be rolled over to the next round uh, with notifications uh, in mid-October. So please check out our website and also check out the Facebook pages uh, if you are a GLF alum to stay connected to those in your cohort. And, uh, alumni more broadly. I'll turn it back over to you, Tommy. Thank you. I think Noah is now going to talk to us uh, quickly about global competence and its definition. Absolutely. And just want to remind people, um, if you could please put um, ES for elementary school or MS for middle school or HS for high school um, in front of your name, if you can rename yourself, um, that would be really helpful so we can get a sense of uh, how we want to break the room's up a little in a little bit. Um, so we're here, we assume that you're here because you have an interest in either global education or specifically in the sustainable development goals and how to bring them into your classroom. Um, 
as Tommy mentioned, this is a series of three global learning webinars, um, and we're using uh, various frameworks of global competence, but the main framework that, that is most common is the one you see in the circular shape on the left uh, from Asia Society, uh, where there are four domains of global competence. Investigate the world to get students outside of their immediate environment, to recognize diverse perspectives, to communicate ideas effectively across cultures, and to take action. Um, this definition of global competence on the slide comes from OECD, um, and it also kind of captures the, the essence of what we're talking about. Global competence is the capacity to examine local, global, and intercultural issues, to understand and appreciate the perspectives and worldviews of others, to engage in open, appropriate, and effective interactions with people from different cultures, and to act for collective well-being and sustainable development. And sometimes it's helpful to think about the sustainable development goals as potential content that we can look at as we investigate the world um, and work toward um, these other global competencies that I just mentioned. And with that, I'll turn it back over to, in fact, I think we're ready to go into some sharing. So each of us on the panel here, we're gonna share a short example from our own classrooms, our own contexts, um, in which we have worked in the sustainable development goals in some way. And so Emily's gonna start us off. And, and Tommy, if you could move to the next slide and then we'll get going. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Robinson and I teach high school. Um, my lesson plan uh, featuring the goals showcases the kite runner, but this lesson can be adapted to a variety of stories um, or to a variety of, of other subjects and topics. So what I did was um, I chose um, some of the things in the book that students will not be familiar with, such as Sharia law, um, the different ethnic groups in Afghanistan and kite fighting. The students must research these topics and I provide a suggested list of items that they can research. You know, you, you still have to break it down for them a bit. Um, get into groups of two to three and teach the class what they discovered. How the goals fit into this is that um, they have to incorporate the assigned goal to the topic from the kite runner and discuss how their topic can address that goal. So for example, as I put on the slide, um, how can Sharia law help achieve the SDG number two, no hunger? This will require the students to really stretch their thinking, especially coming from a Western perspective. Um, they um, are a bit at a loss when it comes to some of the things that we talk about from the kite runner because um, that is a, a culture that's very different from the cultures we're exposed to here in the West. Um, another idea would be to explain kite fighting and how that can help goal number three, good health and well-being. Um, but of course, there are many combinations you can put together for your lesson plan. So just get creative and challenge the students to think outside the box, brainstorm ideas, and come up with viable solutions to difficult problems. And um, I just think that this can give students a feeling of ownership and investment if they can see how their designs can influence the world. Um, now keep in mind that the concerns the SDGs explore are complex and multi-layered. So you shouldn't expect the students to present a complete resolution. Um, but feel free to push the students. If you see they're coming up with concepts that you know definitely won't work, or if they are oversimplifying the issue. Um, so in the, you know, in the breakout room, we could talk more about this so we can help each other know um, what to expect or to look out for, because I have definitely like specific examples of that. Um, so as you can see, this lesson is a two-in-one because students get to learn about unfamiliar topics from Afghanistan and about the sustainable development goals. And they also teach the class, so the teacher gets to take a break. Um, and I have ideas about how students can teach class that I can share in the breakout room. 
um, letting students take the lead can be a fulfilling experience like for everyone. Um, and that's why I think that this would be a good lesson plan and something certainly that you could apply in all kinds of different stories and topics. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, next up will be Sonia as she uh, talks about SDG number six and socially situated science. Wonderful. And Tommy, I kind of have like a few, yeah, rollouts. So maybe I'll just let you know when to click next. That so, would be fantastic. <laughs> thank you. So socially situated science really is talking about a current social issue that you can dive into scientific investigation and science connections but with embedding SDGs into it. So I want to highlight just a few um, uh, projects that my students came up with under water and sanitation. Go ahead, Tommy. So the foundation really is from social learning theory, situated learning from Laban Wenger, and really looking again at the um, socio-scientific issues that come up. Go ahead, Tommy. So the trifecta that I look at, so I was concentrating on water and sanitation management access, um, not only here in the States, but globally, but with this lens of always looking at community and family involved in the SDG. So, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, about how you engage community and family along your, with your SDG examination. Go ahead, Tommy. So when I first tried this, it was through the access point of it, right when the Flint, Michigan water crisis was happening. So 2016, um, my kids were all over it saying like, how could this be happening? You know, here, you know, in the United States, again, this lens that like, we don't have water issues. We don't have access problems. We don't have contamination. So we really started getting, unpacking the SDG through a local lens and then being able to scale out and looking at what water access management, health, water rights all around the globe looked like. Go ahead, Tommy. And so because I teach in a school that have kiddos from all over the world, we were able to make really powerful water connections and look at water and sanitation um, comparisons, where we divert, how it's, you know, the politics involved in it and compare, um, our water policies here in Idaho versus other places in the country versus global implications. Go ahead, Tommy. And so I wanted to provide a few questions that I ask myself as I'm unpacking this model. So if I'm looking at socially situated science and looking at water and sanitation, that's my SDG. That's like my justice issue. Um, and then community and family. And we can unpack this a little bit in the breakout room, but what do I mean by community? So if I'm focusing on water and sanitation, I need, I need to look at who's the expert in this. I am not a water expert. I'm a fifth grade teacher. I have, you know, some limited, you know, understanding of how sanitation works at a city level and policy, but I needed the experts. I needed support from the community and I needed um, to know like how would others experiences and their demonstrations benefit my students. And then the family. The family is in the is the center of my heart when I'm unpacking SDGs with my students because a child is an accumulation of the value systems of the family, of those experiences, of the dialogue, the narrative that a family brings. So I really want to help my students connect with what do our families think about this? What are the experiences we have with water and sanitation? Um, what are the stories that we have in our hearts and our homes regarding this issue? And then the justice issue, because I do see these sustainable goals as justice. Um, who does it affect? Where's the controversy? How do I get kids connecting globally and with each other surrounding this topic? So um, I will unpack a little bit more in the breakout room of specific examples of how we did this, but that's just a very quick um, spotlight of what that looked like with fifth graders. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, so much. Um, then we now have uh, John Tierney up and uh, he's gonna be talking about showing how his students learn how they are the World Bank. Or they could be the World Bank <laughs> or what the World Bank is. Uh, I, I got my idea 
attending an economic seminar in Reno and found out I was the only middle school teacher there with a bunch of high school and, and college people. And so I decided to take advantage of that because in my class, I could teach anything I wanted. And I asked them, what are three things that my students should know going into a high school class? And they said, uh, opportunity costs, basic law of supply and demand, and the three basic, basic economic systems. And uh, what I discovered is that my, my students were in very rural Nevada, okay? Uh, have absolutely no concept of the differences between socialism, communism, and capitalism, and the role that government plays with population, with business, how it interfaces, or anything else. And so I wanted to create something for them uh, to play with this, because I think a sense of play is, is sometimes lost in, in academic subjects like economics. Uh, I also wanted them to have a sense of student ownership. I wanted this to be collaborative. I, I picked out a piece of artwork that most of them knew. Um, it's a wonderful life. And I wanted them to see that in a, in a different perspective. And I wanted them as they're working to consider these SDGs like quality education, because they're going to have to problem solve a country uh, as you know, as an economist, that is having some struggles economically, or socially, or combination culturally, whatever. And and I wanted them to apply what they were learning. So go ahead, give me the next slide, if you would. You one? There you go. Oh, not that one. The one that follows this one. There you go. <laughs> So um, what I did is I made them the World Bank, but before we got there, uh, I wanted them to create working definitions for uh, socialism, communism, and capitalism, because they basically know nothing. So we're starting at the ground. And I, so I put them in groups, and those are gonna be groups that are gonna work with the entire time. I wanted them to create working definitions we shared those definitions with the class and as classes, we created our own working definitions that were going to be revised as we went along and learned a little more, became more sophisticated. Uh, so um, to put the, to kind of get the relationship between government and, and economic systems, I, I created a car auction. Uh, and just an example, if you're going to create a communist vehicle, I chose the Lauda. In, in Russia, which is a very basic manual transmission, ugly looking boxy thing, no air conditioning. You know, that's what you're gonna create. We're gonna respect how much you can, you can bid on it as your group. Socialism as the government, I played that role in the auction, also auctioneer. Uh, I gave them a little more freedom, capitalism. They could create anything they wanted. Uh, I gave them tons of money to bid with. And, and they had fun. And then we discussed how uh, this kind of all fits together. And, uh, and then to check for understanding, I use It's a Wonderful Life because it contains these elements. If you're willing to look at it from that perspective instead of just an old movie that's good at Christmas time. And then we discuss what elements of the movie they thought were communist, socialist, capitalist. And of course, the banker is always evil. It's post. <laughs> post Great Depression. And then I said, okay, you're the World Bank. What is the World Bank? And, and they got a real clip of video on it. And, and I gave them a, a description of a country that was in trouble economically. Uh, Myanmar is a good one, okay, right now. And, uh, and, they and I had to ask them, because they're terrible at asking questions, what is GDP, you know? In other words, and when they said, I don't know, then we explored the subject. They didn't understand what literacy is and, and that kind of thing. So once we got those things out of the way, they had to incorporate these SDGs and problem solve that country using an economic system or a combination thereof. Because you know, let's face it, there is no pure capitalism except in the black market. And, uh, and then we shared those. And as a class, we discussed, had to create our own uh, agreement in the class that we thought the World Bank would do. Because uh, 
they can, would come up with things like bake sale. Countries don't do bake sales. High schools do bake sales. So getting them out of that role and having them role play and problem solve and, and do some pro, uh, project-based learning, it was successful. They had a good time. They got the basics and uh, we moved on. Thank you, John. I appreciate your presentation there. And uh, we'll now go to Noah, um, who's a high school teacher, as he said, and he's going to talk about his um, presentation on youth-led global issue conferences. Thanks, Tommy. Um, I, I chose an, uh, an example to share uh, tonight um, that's not from my classroom, uh, per se, but it's a, more of a school-wide example. So um, that could be adapted to elementary school or middle school. Um, I do it with middle schools and high schools. Um, and I work on this project outside of my regular classes, pulling students in. It's more of an extracurricular activity. And so um, this for the past six years or so, I've worked with a group of high school students um, to plan a conference, a youth-led conference um, based on uh, various global issues. So now we use the SDGs as a framework and, and students who come to the conference and present workshops, because all of the workshops themselves are youth-led, they have to attach it to a specific SDG. Um, we also have keynote speakers who the students invite uh, to come speak. And then there's another structure that we call global villages that are youth facilitated small groups. We do this in partnership with a nonprofit organization called the Global Issues Network, um, Global, sorry, Global Issues Network. Uh, and they're based in Berkeley, California, and they work with schools all over the world in uh, Latin America, Asia, um, Europe, to put on these youth-led conferences. But our conference was was unique because it was put on by a, it's been put on by a public high school, a compre comprehensive high school in the US where most of the schools that put on these gin conferences are independent schools um, in various places around the world. Um, we did have to cancel our conference last year um, due to COVID. But just this past Saturday, we held our first virtual version of this conference. We, it was a smaller group this year. We had about 60 or 70 students register and participate. Um, we had a couple of keynotes and we gathered for about four hours on Saturday. Um, and you know, for the kids who came, it was a great success. We had three different student-led workshops. Um, one was about, um, was more of a local focus on uh, ethnic studies and racial justice in our schools, but connected to sustainable development goal number four, um, you know, quality education for all. And so I'll stop there, but would be happy to share more with people in breakout sessions um, if you're curious. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Um, I'll quickly present my project. Um, this is a project, I picked this project um, because I think it can relate to any grade level. Uh, I teach first and second grade, like I had mentioned. Uh, so it's Heifer International, and it really zeroes in on zero hunger and quality education now, too. They've branched out a little bit. Um, and it starts with, um, this was actually a student-led project. They came to me with the idea of wanting to use Heifer International for a project. And then I took it and then um, figured out how to incorporate SDGs and go from there. So it started with us reading this book, Beatrice is Dope, and it talked about, you know, community receiving a goat as a gift and how it impacted the whole community in many different ways. Um, first and second grade, like teaching them to read is, is one of the big things we do as, as teachers. And, um, you know, we were at a point in the year where, where all the kids were, were feeling pretty confident with their reading. So what we did was um, they created a uh, sheet, basically like the old, um, like run-a-thon sheets or any any kind of fundraiser sheet where you used to get sponsors for every mile or every jump rope little jump you did. And um, the students would get sponsors for every book they read. And they'd keep a log and it kind of motivated them to want to read more and more. At the same time, it would produce more and more money the more they read. So they, you know, reached out to typical family members and, and aunts, uncles, and this and that. But then we also use social media. Um, we use Facebook and we use Twitter. And uh, we use local media, um, two newspapers and the news station, and kind of got our word out that way too. 
and the project kind of took off. Um, you can see in the picture in the background here, there's a map. We had to actually start pinning where all the money was coming from, from donations and everything. Uh, and the class raised in over a month, um, $3,000, which was pretty impressive, I felt, for first and second graders. So what they did was they took the money, and there's a catalog here, and I've linked it in this slide. Uh, if you click on that, there's different prices for different things you can buy to send to villages. And there's a farm in Massachusetts, that have one of the heifer farms that, that raises a lot of the livestock uh, and organizes this. And um, so I put them in three different groups, gave them iPads and all kinds of stuff to, to add and subtract, and he gave them each a budget. And then they would go through the catalog and create a list of um, what they wanted to buy to donate. And um, we tallied, tallied it all up, submitted our order, and then you know a, a nice size gift of a variety of items went to uh, a variety of um, different communities in need around the world. Uh, so, like I said, I thought it was a great project because it can relate to any age. You know, you could turn it to middle school and, and focus on something that they're interested in in high school being the same. Sorry about that. Um, so, I think with that, I'll wrap that up. Um, you know, my um, you can always contact me if, if you have any questions on this project or need help. But most of the things you have here will link you to the project and how to get started. If you click here, this will show you how to sign your class up. And then you can see a video that the class made about the project too to see everything that went into teaching first and second graders about this. So with that said, um, we're about to go into breakout rooms. And as you go into breakout rooms, please use the time to talk about some things that may have you know, come up tonight as you've heard different presentations, things that may have spurred some ideas. Um, after you, you, know, you go around and hear from everyone, um, then we then ask that you will um, create a slide where you can think about Take a few minutes to create, like, what could I share? What's a lesson I could share that would promote the teaching of SDGs? And you probably are not going to complete this slide tonight, but it'll start, like, as a structure. And once um, the meeting's over, at another time, if you can go through and, and finish your slide, uh, these will become a resource that the NEAF will put on their um, website for other teachers to access. So anybody coming looking for ideas, activity, lessons to teach, in this case, SDGs will have access to all the different ideas generated tonight. So with that said, Isabel, if you'd be willing to send us into breakout groups. Um, I'm gonna send you all that for about 20 minutes. Does that sound good? Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as she's doing that, um, I forgot to click the slide as I talked, um, but this kind of gives you the outline of what you'll be doing in your groups as well. Sarah, I have, let me. Oh, hi. See. Hi, how are you doing? Good, I, thought um, I just joined, so maybe I don't fully know what's going on. So you let me, uh, let me send you to. No, that's okay, I can just. Room. Oh, there's a middle school room? Over. Yeah, there's only one other, so I'll, I can jump in there too, because we just moved out into our breakout rooms. Um, so I can also have y'all join a high school one, if you'd feel more comfortable with that, or elementary. So that there's more discussion. Do you have a preference? No, and I'm I'm fine just listening wherever you want to send me. And if you want to like even out numbers, whatever, whatever. Okay, let me send you to our elementary school room then, if that's cool. okay. Perfect. Thanks for being flexible, Sarah. Of course. Um, Elizabeth, I'm going to jump into the middle school real, room real quick to because John is in there. Oh, Erlen just jumped in. So welcome back. Um, I hope uh, people had a chance to to talk and, and found this beneficial. And um, hopefully you had some ideas that came to mind and you're able to start a slide. Um, please make sure on your slide you have your name, the grade in email or social media handles um, just for contact purposes. And Isabel also will send out a list. She was just saying that has all this contact as well. 
Uh, with that said, it brings us to the last part of our program. And I believe, Isabel, you're going to be speaking about this. Are we going to share out at all, Tommy? Oh, sorry, Sonia, that was my That's okay. I went by the slide and <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Blew by it. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Tommy. So appreciate everyone who got their slides started and um, is willing to share that contact. And like Tommy said, you can go back and um, jazz it up a little bit more with more information. But I'd love to hear, we have a few minutes set aside for this. Um, somebody from each of the groups that might want to highlight, you know, sort of what their thought was or their lesson that they connect with or something that they want to try. Um, I was in the elementary school group, and so I'll actually nominate Monica. She agreed to it to share just a quick snippet of what she's thinking and is going to unpack for us on her slide. Monica, would you mind sharing? Sure. I actually, um, why well, I came to this one is I'm very interested in the SDGs, and um, I put in there um, Empatico, which is done through the Kind Bar, and you do virtual friends, and I was sharing that. I have virtual friends. My, I live in, in California. We have virtual friends with a, a school in Harlem and we meet once about once a month and we do different activities. And I also put iron. Um, I like that program too. We did a hello world, which is a five week and um, we got to connect with kids in um, Ohio, um, Australia, Nepal, Taiwan, I can't remember, Indonesia. And it was through a five week um, process. So um, I'm hoping to take it to the next step. So uh, we realize we have a lot of different, not not as many differences as we thought. We have a lot of similarities from kids all over the world. So that's what I did. And Monica came really wanting, you know, she's going to see how she can incorporate SDGs into that. So that's a framework that she already uses that she has success with. And then maybe she can do some SDG collaborative work with her buddy school. Do we have anybody from um, the middle school group that would like to share? One person? I can share. Thank you. Well, I don't have a, a screen to share, um, but we chatted a little bit about um, geography and social studies um, and uh, the resource that I was starting to share was about uh, there's, a, there's a, a free website called Epic, um, and the website is getepic.com, and it's in, like an independent reading website, and um, you know a great teaching tool for the SDGs. That, and we also talked about how wonderful it is that you can take them in any direction and kind of compile categories. And so on Epic, you can make collections and assign collections of picture books to students. And in, we love picture books in middle school because you're never too old for picture books, and they're great. Um, uh, they, they're really great for discussion. Um, and there's tons of great nonfiction teaching tools you can use with like the back matter and teaching into parts of like what goes into making a book and the research. And so there you can, um, uh, we're currently in my literacy class, we're teaching in a unit called Agents of Change. And so we made a collection of picture book biographies for people who have like changed the world in the way that they've been able to. So. Um, so between like human activity, geography and human activity, like on an activist level, that's what we were discussing in middle school. That sounds amazing. My goodness. Cool. Thank you, Sarah. Um, do I have one more volunteer before we go to evaluations um, from the high school group? Anybody want to share? Ellie, I'll do you want to Sure. Yeah, I'll share a little bit about um, what we were discussing. Um, so first of all, Diana was inspiring to, to hear that she has been leading a lot of different SDG initiatives with her students in Indonesia and um, upwards of 300 students from different schools collaborating and working together with projects on SDGs. So that's inspiring. Um, and it was really great to hear some of her project ideas. And then we also talked about um, youth-led conferencing and how to help students get involved with SDGs through uh, NOAA's initiative. And then we were talking about integrating agriculture and uh, water resources and water pollution into our classrooms with the SDGs. So good conversations. 
Absolutely. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who shared. And that's just a highlight of things you can go back and look at in the slides and those resources will be available to all of us. So thank you for being a thinking partner. Isabel, do I give it back to you? Sure. Um, unless Tommy, do you have any final, final remarks? Uh, no, I just, I think, you know, um, I assume you'll do some kind of closing too, but just thank everybody, everyone for joining tonight and uh, being willing to share. And, and I hope you found um, you're taking away something new. Exactly. Yeah, to ditto off Tommy. I thank you all for joining. We really appreciate it. And thank you to all the panelists as well who shared all their ideas. I've posted a, a survey in the chat. If y'all could um, fill that out, we'd really appreciate it. Um, to get information moving forward, but to follow up. So I will send a follow-up email that has all the links to the elementary, middle, and high school uh, breakout slides um, so that you can perfect your um, slide and add anything that you would like to it. And then we'll compile the um, all the information collected to be a resource for all. And once we um, share that resource, we will let everyone know as well. So for now, if everyone could please fill out the survey and um, be on the lookout for further communication from the foundation. Thank you all so much. Thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. Thanks to the panelists. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> hey, Noah, sorry, I missed your presentation. That's okay.